Welcome to Norse Code, the number one podcast for your Minnesota Vikings. I am your host and producer. My name is James Fagoshnik. Thank you so much for listening. And on the other end of the tin can and string, we have our analyst and co-host. You know him from multiple blogs and podcasts around the internet, including places such as Cold Omaha, Zone Coverage, places like that. He is Arif Hassan. Arif, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? You know, I'm good. This uh, this Easter weekend thing seems to be going uh, fairly well. It's it's just about time to kind of settle in and and everything. But we wanted to release something here on Easter just because we like you people. We want to make sure that you've got analysis about something that most people haven't covered, and we've got something special planned for you later too. So we've uh, we've got a, a, a reasonably big signing news, I suppose, uh, to cover up for the loss of Jarius Wright. So we'll start that in just a second, but. Uh, Before we do, just wanted to thank you guys so much for listening, for helping out, for sharing uh, information about the show through friends, colleagues, on Twitter, on Facebook, however you do. Uh, Again, thank you guys so much. We really do appreciate it. Uh, If you would like to donate to the show, you can do so in one of two different ways. You can go to paypal.me slash Norse code, and you can uh, donate to the show there. You can also go to patreon.com slash Norse code, and that's more of a subscription-based thing, so you can do $1 a month, $5 a month. Most people tend to do Tree Fitty, just to help keep the Loch Ness Monster at bay, and help keep the lights on. So, again, thank you guys so much. We really do appreciate it. Uh, we're going to be going into more of the... Uh, the draft stuff here coming up, and then we're going to be going into all of the loveliness that is the uh, desert of May and June. Not dessert, just a big <laughs> desert of news. <laughs> Long, long crossing. So, uh, but we are going to uh, talk a little bit about uh, Kendall Wright, who uh, made the announcement here on Friday that he is uh, going to be a Minnesota Viking. He was last with the Chicago Bears, and before that, spent five seasons in Tennessee. Now, he's one of those guys, correct me if I'm wrong, that like, he wasn't really like a, a big breakout guy. I mean, he caught 50 balls in, in Chicago from, uh, from Trubisky, but I always seem to know of Kendall Wright because he's always available on the waiver wire. On yeah. Fantasy, he's always, always, he's always been to me. He's always been on the cusp of a breakout. So, um, I'm kind of of the opinion that he's been like consistently underrated throughout his career. I think over the last two years, I've kind of had to walk that back because he's been given a lot of opportunities and, and he hasn't really taken a hold of them. Uh, and so, you know, the, the Titans drafted, you know, a first round receiver to replace him. They started Tajay Sharp and they were fine kind of losing Kendall Wright in that scenario. And yeah, at that point, I'm just like, yeah, maybe I'm wrong about this guy. Maybe he's not going to turn into a thousand yard receiver. He does have 1000 yard receiving season, but maybe he's not going to turn into a thousand yard receiver. But for the purposes of what he could do for the Vikings versus kind of what Jerry's Wright did, I think there's a really good argument that he's an upgrade at the slot position. Uh, a lot of people are getting kind of disappointed at the idea that the Vikings are not going to have a big bodied receiver. Um, their outside receivers are also players that you can play in the slot pretty easily. They both kind of started their careers as people that you expected to kind of see in the slot. And they've kind of moved into those outside roles and they'll still switch in and stuff like that. Um, but because of that, because the two primary receivers are outside guys that flip into the slot, Jarius uh, only had like 18 catches last year and 11 catches the year before. Uh, and so it's very difficult to find a way to put him on the field. It's very easy to find a way to put a big bodied guy like Laquan Treadwell, who outsnapped Jarius Wright by like 250 snaps and ended up having a similar amount of yardage. Um, you know, that that I understand is like an issue. But I think just generally speaking, the Vikings were addressing depth first and then they'll kind of figure out how they're going to approach the problem of fulfilling uh, you know, a role that kind of makes more sense in three receiver sets. Uh, and, you know, maybe that ends up being Caleb Jones. Maybe that ends up being another undrafted free agent or a late round receiver, or maybe it ends up being like a third tight end or whatever. But for the most part, it's a depth signing. It's an upgrade over what Jerry's Wright, I think, is probably an upgrade over what Jerry's Wright is. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, Wright was kind of hidden by by just the the nature of the role that the Vikings kind of put him in uh, and the nature of the receivers that they had. And I don't think Kendall Wright is going to kind of break out of that. But I think that he's probably a better receiver. Uh, and if Stephon Diggs gets injured, like, again, then I think you've got a really good option to kind of replace a lot of those yards. Uh, but, yeah, it doesn't solve one of the few issues that the Vikings have potentially with the receiving core. But it does 
uh, you know, round out kind of the, the foundation. Cause I think a lot of people agree that the team is talented, but there's a lot of depth issues to resolve. You need depth along the offensive line, maybe a little bit more depth on the defensive line. You need a depth at corner receiver, et cetera. And this is kind of one of those signings that kind of, that points to that. And he certainly could be a, a big option on third down. It's, it's just kind of funny that with this signing, and he's not a he's certainly not an unknown receiver. He's it's kind of hard to quantify this in like as far as like previous uh, wide receiver signings of the last like couple years because he doesn't come in as some former number 1 that was like accomplishing things like Michael Floyd and Michael Floyd ended up doing uh, ostensibly nothing uh, for us minus a couple of just random catches. So him coming in is how would you describe him as far as like a previous signing goes like how, what where should our expectation level be for him uh you know i think we should expect him to make the roster and contribute 200 to 400 yards if he contributes 600 i think that that's a huge boon or it means that someone got injured uh but yeah you know i think that he should you know outperform my uh michael floyd which is not a huge uh, bar to clear, but beyond that, also uh, outperform what uh, what Jerry Wright and Laquan Treadwell individually could do. Maybe kind of create the sum of their performances, which is about 400 yards. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, 398 I think, of them uh, not being Treadwells. Yeah. Uh, so ex- exactly. Uh, so yeah, I think um, that's the expectation. He should. At the moment, unless you know the Vikings find some other receiver sad, should at the moment be a favorite for the wide receiver three position. It's possible that Caleb Jones beats him out or another guy uh, for that wide receiver three position. Uh, and he should almost certainly, I think, have a shot at making the roster. I think that he's got like an above 75% chance of making the roster. Uh, and from that position, he should provide like a lot of, you know, fourth, fifth receiving options on the field when, when Cousins goes through his progressions. And it's, it's lo- just looking at the fact that he has, uh, that he's agreed. It's, I, I really want to see the numbers on this particular deal because it's, it, the Vikings have very little in the way of cap space for anyone who's not coming in like from the draft. So yeah, exactly. This is the Vikings have about six and a half million, I think reserved for the draft and undrafted free agency. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, just, just in case, I think they technically only need to have 5.8 million, but I, you know, obviously, peanuts. You know, you, I, I, you, I don't want right. him to be like, I don't want him to have like signed for peanuts, but I would like to know just, <laughs> just how many peanuts are being given right. to him. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think, what was it? Jerry's was making, I think four, I want to say, and now he's making, um, a little under 2 million per year, mm-hmm. uh, with Carolina. Um, with up to three and a half million per year in incentives, which I mean, go for it. Uh, I, I would imagine that Kendall Wright signs for maybe a little bit more than Jerry to the Carolina, but definitely less than Jerry's Wright was, uh, was costing the Vikings when they cut him somewhere between two and three, probably. That's my guess. Yeah. Well, that's uh, I think that's it for for the Vikings news portion of this. I mean, it's there's not much more to go on for for Kendall. Uh, so you haven't been following the uh, the punter news then? Well, huh? I there's nothing to talk about there other than the fact that the uh, punter for Oakland has been released for apparently being a distraction. You may know this punter because he was the one they signed for letting go of Chris Cluey for being a distraction. so i mean say what you will about the situation but like there's not a lot of uh, oakland is just such a weird team at the moment that it's kind of hard to quantify things that are that are happening out there like it's everyone that signs is apparently like a six or an eight year veteran Right. Or like or somebody that like in 2013, you could have definitely justified having on the roster. Yeah. Uh, So Eric Decker, Leon Hall, who actually I did want the Vikings to go after. But I mean, it's just too hilarious not to bring up that they signed a 33 year old corner, Leon Hall. Uh, Tank Carradine, who's a pretty good draft prospect at the time uh, in 2013. Doug Martin, who is uh, who just came off uh, well, almost hitting Adrian Peterson's single game rushing record, I think, around 2013. Uh, Jordy Nelson. 
uh, who, uh, who was one, you know, I think an all pro in 2013. It's very, it's a very 2013 roster. Eric Decker was nearly an all pro that year. Someone got him Madden that year and he loved it so much that he just hasn't figured out that, you know, players have come and gone since then. Like, can we get Doug Martin? That would be great. Yeah, right. Exactly. Oh, muscle hamster. Yeah, no, he could definitely, you know, he, he could get him in the right place. He could go for 2,000 yards. This is perfect. <laughs> uh, Marquette King, I believe, is the uh, punter in which we are referring. Uh, apparently, the Vikings have inquired about Marquette King now that he has been released. Uh, I thought Quigley did a fine job, but it wouldn't be a bad thing for Marquette King to be uh, to be brought in, right? Yeah, no, I think so. So Quigley, to me, uh, on average, did average, but... Uh, you know, inside, uh, you know, in short yardage punting situations where you want to, uh, you know, get inside the 20 and avoid a touchback, you know, he did excellent. He had no touchbacks this year, had a lot of punts inside the 20. Uh, not, I don't think a ton inside the 10, but still, you know, it's all right. He, uh, when, when called upon, he was not a problem. Right, exactly. Uh, the only issue is that when you're pinned inside your own territory, like, a, you know, your own 30 and, and, and closer to your end zone, you know, he was one of the worst in the NFL, uh, but he didn't like shank punts uh, and he didn't uh, he didn't outkick coverage or anything like that. And so he didn't create liabilities. Like you said, he never created like a liability, but he also didn't like flip the field in the same way that Marquette King can, who has been a top five punter for the past like three, four years. Um, he's a little bit more likely to create touchbacks, but I think you'll take that. Uh, given sort of, uh, I think he adds something like eight yards on punts that are from inside your own 30, which, I mean, that's huge. Like, cause you'll probably punt, you know, if you're a good team, you'll probably punt, you know, 20 times inside your own 30. And if you're not that great, maybe 40 times. Uh, so, you know, let's say 25 times, uh, you know, that's, that's a, that's a good chunk. It's, you know, it's, it's good to have an extra 200 yards um on uh to your defense uh in that way so yeah it's i I think he would be an improvement it'd be nice to go from like an on average average guy uh to a guy that's you know fair to put in the top five and i think made the all pro team last year yeah it's um gruden's doing something out there anyway it'll be Uh, interesting to see what it is once you know the first couple weeks of the season come out i don't think that a coach has had this much buzz about him, his personnel decisions, uh, and or coaching style since Chip Kelly went to the Eagles, and everyone just had this assumption that this is going to be some big like college run offense. And, and to be fair, it was, but just like there hasn't been this much deck shuffling on the Titanic, so to speak. Right, yeah. <laughs> Well, somebody said it was to send a message, and it was just like, man, are you using your punter to send a message? Yeah. Like, <laughs> And it's like the worst message to send, right? Because they're keeping Marshawn Lynch. Oh, God, uh, yeah. And, and so, like, the message is basically, we won't put up with your antics unless we do. Like, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Like, they both dance on the sidelines. Like, they're, they're both, like, interesting personalities in the locker room. Uh you know, one of them is an all pro and the other one is Marshawn Lynch. <laughs> so just kind of take that. <laughs> but, you know, we can't have it. We can't have an all. Wait, wait. All right. So here's the thing. Uh, and actually, I have his stats up right here. The question is, how was he in 2013? And I will tell you how he was in 2013. <laughs> oh, no. So for punting stats, he had 84 punts, an average of uh but 48.9 yards longest was 66 oh, that's great wow okay so uh total yards punting was over 4000 4107 the next year was 4930 but uh so he was a 4107 and had 11 touchbacks that uh that year well that's not great but other than that that's wow all right that was by far the most that he had for his entire career so if he's building the 2013 madden team i don't see why you don't don't keep marquette king i I don't know it's just i guess uh i guess you gotta free up that extra cap space for leon hall (laughs) it's i get that if i had to choose between leon hall in his prime and marquette king in his prime i guess i'd choose leon hall this in in that scenario that doesn't exist right now. Who was on the All right, now the next question is who was on the cover of the 2013 Madden? And the answer to that huh. is Richard oh, Sherman. No. No. Year before that, right? That was the uh that was the year before that. So Madden 13. 
Um, had multiple people on it. Oh, weird. So okay, so twelve I think was Peyton Hillis. Yeah. Yes. Twelve was Peyton Hillis. Thirteen had is multiple. This the, is, was this the one where fans could vote? Yes. No. Okay. So did Mike Vick end up on the twenty thirteen? Because that I think there was like a chance. That would have been hilarious. There, there was. I believe there was a chance. Yes. Okay. So Tom Brady, I think, is one of them. Oh, Calvin Johnson. Oh. There. Really? Hey, listen. I'm not saying, I'm just saying that Calvin Johnson is somewhat available to uh, to be brought back, and he was a monster in 2013. That's fair. That's, I think that might have been his, uh, it's, uh, his career high in like, touchdowns, too. Mm-hmm. So Calvin Johnson wow. was uh, the main person on 2013. So if we look up Calvin Johnson's stats for uh, just a moment. <laughs> God. Uh, yeah, he, he did, he did very well for himself in 2013, uh, played 14 games, started 14 games, had 156 targets, Jesus, 84 receptions, just under 1500 yards, an average. This was the most he ever averaged in his career. 17.8, a carry, a catch rather 12 oh touchdowns. Calvin Johnson's available. <laughs> I'm, just, on, I'm not saying, I'm just saying. And only lost one fumble. So, like, he's, he's, I, I think he's going to be the next person to, like, get the phone call. You're like, listen, I'm excited. I know you haven't played for a couple of years, but I remember playing you on 360 with, uh, <laughs> with my son. And let me tell you, you got what it takes, kid. Why don't you come out to Oakland? If you're Calvin Johnson, I mean, you probably take that up, right? I mean, depending on how much money he decided to throw at me and if it was all guaranteed. Like, uh, listen, yeah. I was the cover guy for 2013. I feel like I'm due a little bit more. <laughs> 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 I like I like the idea that uh, John Gruden hasn't learned any names of any players outside of like doing the Monday Night Football games, and then immediately after the game, it just leaves his brain. <laughs> right, exactly. The only thing that's sunk in is 2013 Madden. <laughs> I'm excited for the 2013 Raiders. This is going to be great. I can't, <laughs> I can't wait. This is going to be the team to watch for the first two weeks of the season. And then it'll just get sad. When everyone gets hurt. So, uh, we wanted to do something special for you guys, uh, what with the, the Easter holiday uh, going on, and uh, we wanted to kind of relax a bit and uh, go into a little bit of scouting and rebuilding. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to be watching this link uh, that I have sent to Reef, and neither of us have spent any time watching this, so we're just going to sit and... Uh, and, and, do yeah, and give blog. our initial impressions. Exactly. Yeah. So we're going to do a little bit of scouting and rebuilding with uh, two fellas named Jonathan and Drew. So are you prepared? I am so prepared. Excellent. Um, so you can find the link to this in the uh, show notes. You can find the link to this on the DN page as well. Uh, this is going to be at dailymotion.com slash video slash X3NZJHI. And uh, we're going to go. As far as I can tell, it's not a virus, so no. uh, we're we're in a good shape already. Excellent. Um, so this is going to be kind of like when we did the uh, when we did the New Orleans Saints 2009 NFC Championship game, where we watch the film and then we commentate live through it. And occasionally, I'll give little uh, things like, "Okay, we're in. We're back from commercial, and we're we're going in." So, uh, just kind of letting you guys know what's up. So again, this is DailyMotion.com/video/x3n for Nancy Z J H I. All those letters are lowercase. So, are you ready for Property Brothers Season 8, Episode 1, Diana and John? <laughs> I am ready. All right, here we go. Starting in three, two, one, go. And we have begun. And they are definitely not living in this house. They disagree. Oh, wow. She's taking control, man. Yeah, she is not happy. 
No. So how, how much do you think the Property Brothers planned this out, like sort of beforehand, that one ended up being a contract and the other ended up being a real estate agent? Because those are two completely different sets of skills. Uh, you know, you have to go through like different life paths and they're like, hey. I feel you know, like this, this like came together late one night. Like, you know what you should do? You, you got your <laughs> real estate license, right? I have to, I have to imagine that. Oh, so he doesn't have as much of a scruff as he usually does. The contractor guy always has like this really sexy scruff. <laughs> that is one way to put it. Yeah. All right. So I, I want to know how much the. Okay. So the plot of this episode is that he uh, and her ha- live with her parents Could and they have a kid. There we go. Yeah, they they thought they'd find time, but you know, find a home by the time they'd get a baby. I get that. And they had an offer on a house, but it sounds like it got taken away, and they just Stolen, completely gave robbed. up. Robbed. Darn shame. You know, it's probably robbed like Mike Zimmer's Coach of the Year trophy this year. Aw, oh, he can geez. be a charmer when he wants to. I don't think this marriage is gonna last. <laughs> So really, this episode is going to be about who gets the house once yeah, this right, is all yeah. completed. Yeah, she keeps on sending these passive-aggressive snipes. I think like in five years, it's going to boil over. I've been in this relationship. It doesn't go well. Yeah. We well, downtown, down. but not right down. <laughs> oh, wow. This is, is that not like not wanting to live in a real greenhouse because that's cruel? <laughs> yeah, if I had you know, a million dollars. Okay, I want to point out they haven't so said downtown, what they do yet. Downtown, big Oh my backyard. goodness, 1.08 million. How, how are you living with parents that are 1.8? So they do have a million dollars. Yeah, this is literally a million dollar budget house. If I had a million dollars. So they've got, <laughs> they want a great kitchen, a, uh, a big backyard. They want to live downtown. So that should be easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the tragedy is they haven't told us what they like do for a living. So you might have talked over it. No, they I, I listened very intently there and they did not mention a darn thing. So I just I'm going to assume that uh, she's a beekeeper and he loves fishes because they're so delicious. <laughs> Our budget is a million dollars. Our budget is right. literally a million dollars. So it's season eight. They have to know that they can't have this house, right? Like, right. Because the first the first house they show, it's always like. You can't have this one. No. Here's all the things that you asked for, but, and it's impossible to ask for all those things. But I'm a former first lady, lady and he's a bankrupt NFL first round draft pick. We can, <laughs> we should be able to have this house, right? Okay, so, by the way, so the Property Brothers are six four. If they weren't Canadian, what are the chances that they end up being D one college receivers? There's a pretty good chance. I mean, I you know what I'd be really curious is of their like history with hockey because tall hockey yeah, players right. kind of have an odd. Um, kind of odd history. So it's, it's not necessarily like guaranteed success. She's in love with the, with the place. I'm going to assume this place is now. 1.4 million. That's a way out of their million dollar no. budget. I bet it's over 2 million. She has the look of somebody who's never getting pregnant again. They love open concepts in HGTV. It's too much for me. <laughs> I mean, like what we really need to do is just close off a wall. Right, yeah. Oh, uh, look at this great kitchen. Apparently, he is the cook. Yeah, well, I mean. Those cabinets are too big. Those cabinets are taller than both of the Scott brothers. You by them? I am, That's actually. That's true. Yeah, Listen, and you wouldn't be able to reach up, right, to the very oh, top shelf? No. Like, I'm 6'5", so I'm just a hair taller than them, and I can't even imagine, like, those going, like, that high. Four bedrooms, Jesus. Well, they need an office, right? Because his office right, is apparently yeah. the that one seat on the couch. The office where he can just love fishes because they're so delicious. Exactly. Oh, my God. They even staged the living room for kids. That's <laughs> cruel. That is cruel. You cannot have this. Has Art Nouveau, um, <laughs> Art Nouveau, like lighting oh, everywhere? So, so John is a chef, or do they just say that because he they likes cooking? They just said it. Okay. 
Oh, hey, oh, I you was were right. right. Yeah. <laughs> 1.49 million. It's only $400,000 over their budget. I think they can swing it. While researching the show, I found a uh, episode uh, a few th- that's fairly recent and it was uh they they were like they looked at it, they looked at the first house and like argued about whether why they couldn't up their budget to over 200 grand. That's amazing. I oh, and that's that, what they're like, doing right now. Oh, no, no, they're not. Doing, he's just explaining that we can just renovate stuff, yeah. which is the premise for every show. Be like, well, what I really want is a helipad. Can I get a helipad? Uh, well, you can't buy one, but for cheap, we can renovate a house to have a helipad. Your dreams are in reach with just a little bit of work, James. I get the feeling they fight a lot. Do you think they fight a lot? I think they fight a lot. (laughs) Maybe they fight a lot. This isn't downtown. That looks so suburban. Because when things are going poorly, let's move and make a giant, like, financial decision. I mean... That's going to put a strain on the relationship, but is it going to put more of a strain than like living with one of their parents does? Well, considering the house they were living in looked oh, like, Jesus. oh, geez. Yeah, the house they were living in looked like um, maybe a one bedroom. Yeah. That's a, so, okay. So, one of the, so this house needs work everywhere. One of the issues with the show is uh, should I ruin the magic? Because I saw this Reddit thread like two years ago and I just, I want to. Let's save it for the end. Okay. Let's, let's save ruining magic for the end because we just got back from commercial. Property Brothers icon is on the screen and it is now gone. Well, that's uh, gigantic ceilings, yes. I lived in a house with gigantic ceilings. They uh, they look nice. They're a pain. The fireplace well, yeah, looks couldn't... halfway decent. Yeah, it does. Well, I mean, what's the phrase that real estate agents you think this house has good bones right? <laughs> is that what uh, they kept telling you over and over again <laughs> yeah uh okay so the neighborhood's the problem with this house then i assume it's right next yeah, to like an no- aldi <laughs> we, we're paying a million dollars we're not gonna live next to an aldi uh, <laughs> you're kidding no, it's clearly i don't want to i don't want to do that deposit down. thing yeah <laughs> You have hardwood on the floor, but I will put new stuff on. I will put new stuff down. I mean, they kind of have to. It's I know it's a waste, but like it isn't because like so much of it is ruined. This is terrible. Look at all of that yard. That kid's never going outside. How much yard do do they think they're going to get downtown? I I guess I don't know what city they're in, but I assume it's like Toronto or something. Oh, God. That's um, just tear that out. Just have it open. That's ridiculous. So that's your oh, kitchen. Wow, this kitchen's terrible. This kitchen, it's alone, is going to put them over budget. Yes. Well, a lot, hey, he look, sees a lot of he work? was clever. He sees a lot of pizza being ordered in here. Whoever oh. wrote that was very clever. Yeah. Good job, producer, feeding him the lines. Yes. All right, we're going to shoot this eight times. He has the personality of, like, a wet dish rag. All of the screen presence of, like, ugh, guy in a coma. Are they gonna, they're going to raise the ceilings in the kitchen. Jesus. Oh, so they are tearing down walls. That makes sense. They love open concepts. They're tearing out the entirety of that back wall. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't love it, but, like, it's just what every HGTV show does now. This they just, show, like, this eliminate house, rooms. Yeah, this house better be, like, 600,000 and then like 400,000 right, yeah, for yeah. everything else. They got to do so much. It's going to oh, turn Jesus, out. That chandelier is just a lampshade. <laughs> I feel like that's a commentary. <laughs> that's actually an allegory for life. <laughs> what? Oh, 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 that's cool. So. <laughs> I mean, yeah, of course you have to replace the carpet in the secret compartment that kid yeah. is totally gonna smoke pot in that in that area i knew people in high school yeah, yeah. who had like secret compartments in their parents house and that's all it was ever used for i mean you've seen the good place right yes yeah it's jason's butthole <laughs> <laughs> i 
Oh, but and all home. of the rooms have that lampshade thing. Why? This is what you call a laundry room, Rebecca. Are they really upset about the laundry? Like, it's, laundry rooms are the least consistently renovated rooms. This is what you everything. call a laundry room? Like, yes, that yeah. is exactly what you call a laundry room. New laundry room, $10,000. Yeah, okay, yeah, sure, just $10,000. Oh, here's the price. You ready for it? I'm, I'm, it better be... That's a lot of house. Oh, what? What? Yes, it is steep. Well, so he's going to say that he can negotiate it down, right? That's the only reason they would show. Well, us yeah, that's he's going to be able to negotiate it down like five or ten thousand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It. Yes, it does. In fact, need a lot. Okay, yeah. So he's going to offer for nine twenty. The renovations are one fifty. That brings them real close to their budget. So I get it. That, uh, my, that's a lot of renovating. Though they have to replace a fireplace, uh, replace a laundry room. I guess that's a priority. And that's the perfect situation. Knock down some walls, raise a ceiling. Yeah. Be like, okay. So what happens when you turn? When it turns out that the foundation is is terrible, that the roof all needs to be replaced. That like, right? Yeah. The that's, sewage yeah, they line to is awful. From, yeah. All the electricity was. All the electrics was put in there, what? like when Roosevelt was first elected. Yeah. Oh, see now, now they're like they're they're finding downtown houses and caution tape. That's great. <laughs> yeah, caution tape in front of your uh, in front of the house you are walking into. That that's what you want to see. <laughs> he really wants that downtown. God. Oh oh, that's uh. That's definitely it in the city. It looks like a duplex. It, I, it is. I mean, the way that those those stairs are, it's clearly a duplex. Yeah, that looks like something you would find on, like, Selby in St. Paul. Coming back yeah. from commercial, Property Brothers logo is on. And it is gone. Oh, I hate this place. You're tiny. This place would, like, fit you perfectly. Why do you hate it? I like feeling small and insignificant. <laughs> you don't it reminds have... me that I'm a mere speck in the infinite expanse of the universe. I, I, I suppose I can, I suppose I can believe that. Wow. That <laughs> is quite the linear. Oh, geez. The house is a train car. <laughs> <laughs> can you put a price on living in your dream neighborhood when you're living in a shipping container? <laughs> can we uh can we make this mickey's diner <laughs> you know if we, with enough work we can fit an owl's breakfast in right there Good. <laughs> the owl's breakfast actually fits in the breakfast nook it's gonna be great <laughs> that's yeah, yeah. everything yes. about yeah. that setup looks like it's going to start things on fire including the carpet well so a, the carpet needs to be replaced either way, but B, the carpet is just a fire hazard. Yeah. What is happening? This this whole house is a tinderbox. But it's downtown, so, you know. Uh, I don't think that computer mock-up is really capturing how narrow that space no, is. No, this, this looks way too wide. Maybe, I mean, that's maybe why you want an open concept, right? Everything looks bigger. No walls. Because either getting, there's they should not go for this. They 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 showed this they show the tiny house because they want to really press on the first house. It was built in the eighteen hundreds. Yeah, so you know, renovate it. It should be easy. You're not gonna find anything in the walls. So I make fun of the open concept stuff a lot, but that is absolutely the right decision with this house. Well, there's, there's you shouldn't no have that a wall should yeah, be there. Like you should have like like dividers. There's no reason to have walls in this house. Yeah, right. He's just he's calling it a flow, but it's it's just a unidirectional house. Yes, there you have the flow from the from the front to the dining room. It's like yeah, it's one direction. This is like a side scroller video game of a house. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, As a two D platformer. Yeah, this is. Like Mario 3 of a house. I'm saying Mario 3 because if you, if you find like the white like box, you can like crouch behind it and then go behind things. Like that is <laughs> that is this house. It is a side scroller. 
You think well, Jonathan can turn around for you? Yeah. He's he's sold on this location thing. You can't oh, get over the tiles. God. The tiles are going to be replaced anyway. Yeah, it's weird what she focuses on. Like the stuff she should be focusing on is like who cares about the laundry room? Who cares about the tiles? We know those are going to be replaced. It's like talking about like that fridge is outdated. Like yes, yes it is. I don't. If although if she was going to care about like important things she'd be working on her marriage and not like <laughs> trying to right. yeah consistent buy a million dollar house prioritize the he house likes it she has got such yeah. Canadian accents yeah they're gonna break up maybe <laughs> during the show honestly you know that's, that's really what it, I'd really want to see just the full like breakdown of the couple like the show, the real version of house of like house hunting, where at one point you both hate each other. He's you, just sold on. Like, he doesn't care about the size of the kitchen. He just wants it to be a good kitchen. He doesn't care about the size of the living space. He could live in a closet if it was downtown. He could live in uh, the closet in what the Futurama that? episode. What? What? <laughs> what was that? Was that part of a kitchen? Is there parking? Oh, there's a two-car garage. Yeah, the, the garage yeah. is going to be what sells oh. her. Wait, why the is there steps in the garage? Like half the size of the house. Wait, no, hold on. They're doing this interview after they saw the house, and. She, her complaints are like linear, right? And yes. it doesn't make sense because she's seen the whole house. Oh. And then she's like, but then I found out about the garage. What is that? I knew there wasn't going to be a backyard. No. It's downtown. Not only is it downtown, the house is so insanely small that if it had a backyard, it would have consumed it, right? Like there's no, of course there's no backyard. Did you need to renovate the garage, honestly. Eight hundred and forty nine thousand dollars for the railroad car house. Uh, and that has to be Toronto. There's no other place in Canada that has property values that high, right? Yeah. Jesus. Oh. Hundred and well, I mean, it's a house from the eighteen hundreds. They have to knock out basically every wall. Yeah. All walls and electrical too. Yeah. At least they have a 20 grand like cushion. That's uh, it's a pretty important cushion to have for this house. Why do you he, need to make a decision like soon? Because honestly? he's so tired of showering and having his in-laws come in. <laughs> All right. We're going to see if they've but made they only their decision between two houses. Isn't it usually three? Only two this time. Uh, they, they're going to pick the first one, right? I think he might have. Well, it's the one she likes, and I get the feeling she is going to be the one in charge of. Right. Um, yeah. Wait, are you telling me this marriage doesn't look like one with the equal give and take? No, I from the conversations that we have witnessed. <laughs> no. You're married and you have a kid. You are barely going to go out as it is. You, sure. sir, have not accepted the fact that you are a father. <laughs> you are going I mean, to get he's a got, gym he's membership. Got his, uh, he's got his yuppie hoodie on. Of course he hasn't accepted it. God. I miss being that, like, <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for? Naive about the whole, like, parenthood thing while with somebody. The downtown dud. Oh, so she, that's what she's, she's calling it. She's that's great. She's giving in a little. She's like, there is a thing I like about the other house. Not that we're going there. Please tell me. Uh, you're, please tell me they have so an fake. actual fight in public. This is great. Well, Do no, I have a, you barely have a budget as it is. She, she clearly doesn't even believe that. This is amazing. She hates him. She does. 
I just I, I feel like some some like divorce lawyer is gonna see this like show and just like and just like send out a notice. All right, the logo is back on the screen. Come back from commercial, and it's gone. They've made a they've made a decision. Oh God. You gave her her house. It's our house. Okay, buddy. <laughs> She's totally getting that in the divorce. There is no also, chance. <laughs> you're right. I also love that they had also clearly made their decision. I'll talk more about this later. But like, oh, uh, it's going to be difficult to decide. And you come back from commercial and it's the same shot. Yeah. We've come to a decision. <laughs> now she's just trying to get a bit of a uh, cushion. I mean, that's smart. So he's he's like concerned that like lowballing too much is going to just make them shut off negotiations. Yes. He really should have mentioned how long this house has been on the market, though. That's the. Yeah. Well, normally he does. This is just kind of this is Bush League stuff right here. Yeah, this is this is a lower quality episode we've stumbled upon. Only two houses instead of three. Uh, we, we didn't quite hear what exactly their professions oh. were. Their offer happened? was rejected. Well, no, of course it was. They offered a nine hundred ten thousand. The list price was nine hundred eighty thousand. <laughs> oh, there's another offer on the table. Yep. I hate blind auctions, man. Nine twenty-eight. So now they're not going to have any buffer. So if they find any problems, they have to like sacrifice. Yep. <laughs> like what? We're just not. Gonna, we're just not going to have room for the kid. <laughs> right. No kitchen. I mean, whatever. The other guy is like kind of a wizard sometimes, right? He's just like, yeah, I just walked into a quarry and found a perfect slate of stone. So that's your table now. It costs two dollars. <laughs> like what? Oh yeah. Okay. Cool. I got it from this guy for tree fitty. <laughs> right. Dude. Oh my god. They're going to go antiquing to find like furniture for this house and that's when the marriage blows up yes <laughs> it'll be like at the point of making of like going to of buying tile so they went into midnight negotiations on this stupid house they can stop fantasizing yeah you have to wait seven weeks for the reno well yes Oh, see, they've got a two thousand dollar oh buffer. Oh my god! Yeah, I don't, I, on the, these the shows, farm, I've seen people. The beef, yeah, the beef farm. <laughs> I've seen people take like, oh yeah, so we just asked our parents for ten thousand more, and like then the renovations can proceed. And you're like, wait, what? Yeah, two thousand dollars is their um, is, is their rainy day fund. I can't wait to see like the amount of termites. Right. Exactly. There's always termites. There's always wood, uh, wood like issues. Yeah, I hope they. Uh, uh, I was. I'm always excited when they get the mallet because like it's pretty embarrassing. Often he seemed to do pretty well, but he was hammering against like a balsa wood. Yeah, I get the feeling she's gonna just destroy things. Oh, so that crawl space is why. The kitchen ceiling was so low. Yeah. So they're getting rid of the crawl space. Oh, that sucks. Um, does he, he knows they're already down there, right? Like get your respirator masks on. This is all like awful. Why did you. you have the respirator mask on when you were like hammering a balsa wood table, but not while Yeah. now this is why you There's put it back everywhere. on. Keep doing. <laughs> God, this is why they can't have nice things. What if rats had pooped in the ceiling? You're, oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Now they have it on. Like, they did certainly didn't have it on when it fell. What about this is, like, remotely safe? You idiot. It's not. There we go. The Walter Dancer. Always when you find out who can use a sledgehammer and who can't. Yeah, they're doing a pretty good job, actually. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, you couldn't have figured that out before. Yeah, right. Uh, do you think that's a weight-bearing thing? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> what was the Simpsons <laughs> saying? Sorry, that's a weight-bearing poster. 
<laughs> when they built Flanders the house. <laughs> the tornado that only hit his home. Yes. <laughs> oh, the oh, already spacious. bad news. Good. Yeah, that's going to be more than two grand. Ah, He'll just find a beam at, you know, a Home Depot that's been thrown out. So it'll be free. It's fine. (laughs) So the open concept is no longer open. This is the bad news. Yeah, I can't wait for this, like, the sewer issues. Right. So we sent them out and we brought in our hired team. And this is when we found the dead bodies. Oh, wow. That, that crawl space stuff is going to be... Oh, my God. It's quite empty now. <laughs> I just want some place to hide from my wife. Oh, my God. He loved the, he loved the hidey hole. That's so great. <laughs> Yeah, it would kill the budget that you don't have. You have two grand. They're not going to get rid of the postman. Cathedral ceilings are important in the suburbs. <laughs> it's, it's critical. It's how you gain status. That is, especially since you are not close to anything in the way of shops and coffee shops and whatever he was hoping for. Maybe they could have put a cafe in the hidey hole. Oh. <laughs> we got rid of the cool room and now we gotta <laughs> well you're gonna need to make a bake sale then to come up with the money to take care of this sell off some bees Darn shame. He's trying to explain to these people um, houses work. Yeah, yeah. how houses work. <laughs> he probably should have just like done this with puppets. Just tell them that they you can like we're, we're going to keep this little bit of wall and you can hang pictures on it of your future kids and that you're going to get from your next marriage. <laughs> so it's an open concept but we are closing things off by just making the house smaller well i mean they've already seen what it can be now we're gonna just make it worse <laughs> Yeah, this is totally Canada. There's there's no mistaking that, yeah. that part of the yeah. accent. Oh, oh, she she's got him. She's got a Scott brother on the ropes. Yeah, my next husband's gonna love it. <laughs> Oh, so he's talking about hiding the vent hood. Okay. Yeah, and meanwhile, she's going, well, I want more places to have to clean. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, it, it can look pretty good if done right, but I it definitely sympathize with him. Yeah. I'm a designer. This is what I do. He always asks them to take a leap of faith. Yeah. He's usually right, too, but like, Still. I never trust him. Oh, yeah, you, you you want it white and pretty, huh? Hmm. Well, for her next husband. Oh, yes. No. There it goes. The roof is now going to be an issue. Did they even show the basement? I don't think they even showed the basement. No, I don't think they did. Probably because they're not going to renovate it. They lose more GoPros that way. 
Oh, they're not kidding about this open. Con- Jesus, they're just tearing down. Yeah, they, they told wall. out the. They, they're tearing up like most of that wall. Oh, look! It decided to snow. It's, it's winter now. <laughs> of course. Yeah, because you, you couldn't figure that out beforehand. <laughs> Do they have to hide the post or what's going on? Love that grout work. <laughs> yes, it's dangerous. Uh oh. Down below. The, the, the problem is the wood. Um. Oh, is it just like loose stone just or put something? Your, just put your foot through. <laughs> yeah I personally would have given them like the masks uh, we are back with the, with the logo up and it is gone this is an open concept people let's just <laughs> embrace it yeah embrace it just keep that out you've got a cool place for the kid to slide down now How does that affect your budget? This is a. Oh, see, it's only 800 bucks. <laughs> they just pro- wanted the shot of like rocks and like stone falling 20 or like 12 feet. Yeah, respect the hustle. Congratulations, you spooked them. Oh, hey, the snow's gone. Eh. I don't like hardwood. I've I've lost my taste for it. I like it. I just don't like it too light. I just think that's weird. Yeah. Like my my place has just a little bit of like hardwood, but it's not like everywhere. What is They got bad boards? You have to be able to get a refund of it. There's yeah. no way that's going to So the problem is that the package of wood they receive for the flooring is a uh, is all busted up. Darn. Well, so that is, so that only affects the timeline. Okay. Yeah. Right around the time the show is <laughs> airing, they're gonna have uh, Jonathan and Drew Scott in the background just hammering it away. Just we got it done. <laughs> Is that new or is that the exact same one they had for a chandelier? Oh, I have no idea. Why does she care so much about this place? Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. The producer just said, we're really trying to push bulkheads this season. Can you say the word bulkhead eight times? (laughs) <laughs> oh, it's going to look great. 16 days till move in. I don't believe you. Oh, come on. Why, why the Does, laundry room? Oh, are you sure? I don't know if that really looks like a laundry room. <laughs> God, what a tool. <laughs> so, oh my god so they're gonna of have to I get like rare wood. california like redwood <laughs> they will mm-hmm. not go for it they st- i was gonna Why say is he taking this call inside the house <laughs> because the call is coming from inside the house <laughs> I, I can't hear you. Step outside. I can't hear you. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's quite the large. Yeah. yeah. Why? What? So he has some idea. This is this is going to be tragic. Hairbrained. 
Uh, he is calling them perverts. <laughs> He's arguing against having window treatments or... I don't think I've ever seen an episode where they have to argue in favor of having like shades. Right. He's like, look, I'm trying to make sure that you guys aren't, you know, put on a list. Like there's a school there. We got to make sure that you don't have to introduce yourself as sexual predators every (laughs) single time someone moves in. Oh my God. (laughs) Um, Uh, He's making a pretty good point. He is making a pretty good point. Please tell me he's wearing his uh, tool belt. I think he was yes, wearing his tool I belt so. while walking around in uh, a bathing suit. Sexy as hell. I told you, man. <laughs> so they finally have their flooring. They cut down the world's largest tree in order to do it. <laughs> Nothing but the best for these people. And her second husband. Right. They're like four days from showing, right? This place looks like a disaster. It will be fine. Eh, I don't like that. Eh, Glass tiles, I can take or leave them. I mean, like, I'm okay with glass tiles. It's the um, stacking them completely vertically so that they're aligned. Like, I I like them when they're, like, a regular and offsetting and stuff. It's more interesting. I do wish I had like a, an actual like island uh, in my kitchen, but I'm too lazy to do anything about it. Don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get I get the feeling you'd never sleep properly. <laughs> I just want the, I just want the uh, the fireplace to just be a small TV, and they're just showing the uh, the fireplace thing from Netflix. <laughs> All that right. light. I'll admit it. I missed the tiling. I think they should have had the tile. Oh, they got okay. They got darker than I thought. That's good. The hardwood. Oh, God. <laughs> They're touting the, the window treatment. Now people, can, now people can't look in on the crazy, weird... They're just going to bring the blinds up. Yeah. It's, yeah <laughs> the moment that the Property weird. Brothers yeah. and the film crew leave, they're just putting all of them up. The fireplace refresh costs $5,000. Jesus. Yeah, did he say 500 I feel like he said 500 he said 800 just to replace the dangerous oh, part okay. below. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And now the dining room. I love it when he introduces them to like their home. Like yes. that's so like he's a real estate agent and he's like telling them about <laughs> real estate. It's just so weird. Yeah. Like he, they're no longer buying. It's bought. Can we get to, can we see the episode where the two of them just start like throwing punches at each other? I really just want to see the two of these guys just like start fighting. Are the property brothers, or this couple, because uh, both actually. Yeah. But property couples, couples, especially or property brothers, especially. I think there's a, there's a couple of fan fiction out there that you have to search around the internet. That is, that's going to be next year's April Fool's episode. We're going <laughs> to read Property We're Brothers fan property. fiction. <laughs> <laughs> and, not the se- and not the sexual themed ones. We're just going to one- read the ones where they fight. That's it. That's, that's, <laughs> I have to assume that that exists. Rule 34 says it has to exist. <laughs> I hope you pimp the hell out of this episode on uh, on the football machine this week. <laughs> <laughs> James and yeah, James and I spent a lot of time talking about Kendall Wright and uh, the punter situation. You really should listen to the whole thing, though. Yeah. <laughs> 
and all right it's not bad yeah i would have preferred an open concept my next (laughs) husband will have the money to be able to pay for the renovation (laughs) he is also a beekeeper yes he is he's actually head beekeeper (laughs) my husband my husband is only an intern at the beekeeping (laughs) Quartz counters, man. They could have saved so much money on, on countertops. This is not granite. <laughs> She's going to walk in. The next episode is going to be like, I'm a part-time librarian. and He's a box of string. Our, our, gross <laughs> national, our budget is the same budget that Iran spends on its nuclear program. <laughs> Just to say we know nothing of, our, of their nuclear program, right? Right. Right. Aw, she couldn't be happier until she gets the house and the divorce. Yeah, he's gonna be he's gonna be so heated the whole time he's living there. He's like, I can't go to a cafe. I can't, you know, go to a nice shop around the area. Yeah, this is gonna totally be a situation of like living. In... Laundry looks unnecessarily good. Yeah. What? <laughs> As I see the rope hanging on the wall, I'm reminded of the <laughs> line from. I'm reminded of the line from the Boondock Saints: of, "You and your fucking rope." <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, there's a bunch of nylon rope hanging on the wall. <laughs> oh, great! <laughs> this it's a room laundry. does. This room does, in fact, look like a laundry room. Compromise. Compromise. Just so great. Aw, they're going to be so happy for six weeks. Did he say touring over 100 properties? Over 100 properties that the two of them went to before going to this. And their two choices were the streetcar and this? Yes. So they actually were under budget by two grand. That's incredible. Yeah. So they've got money for a babysitter when they want to go downtown. (laughs) <laughs> one time so, so to ruin the magic this is the point i wanted to to make i'm closing the window too oh yeah, god it's... he's juggling all right uh, uh, so um, let's let's ruin the magic. let's let's ruin the magic here i'm closing the window so what happens is they uh contact couples and families that have actually already decided to buy a house uh and so there's actually no drama they've already made their decision which is why um, I, may, I mean, maybe that's no longer true, but that's been true for like years. Um, so that's why you cut from the commercial where they're like, it's going to be a tough decision. Yeah. And they're like bad actors to the same shot where they're like, OK, we've decided because they've already decided on a house. Uh, and so there's no real debate. Uh, and they've actually already begun the renovation process by the time, you know, the Property Brothers uh, and the whole TV show kind of gets around to it. And so what the couple or family gets out of it usually is a little bit of free labor and an additional $10,000 to their budget is what they usually offer these couples. The problem is because they've got such a tight production timeline, uh, they do a ton of stuff um, pretty shoddily. Uh, And in the past, again, I don't know if it's true for like season eight, but in the past, a bunch of people have had to re-renovate their homes to fix what uh, hastily the property brothers have done. Like people got pissed a lot. At uh, at what uh, at what these uh, home renovation shows have done to their homes, and it's like very often not safe or very often not up to code, uh, and they only do like two or three rooms usually. This episode seems a little bit different. They did more than that, plus the laundry room, but you know they didn't touch the basement, for example, right? No. Well, all they did was just uh, make sure that the fireplace area wouldn't fall down on anyone down there, right? Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's weird. And it's like, there's, they've already decided they've already actually already bought the home. So whenever they do this like drama, like, Oh, we off, we can't offer a nine ten, We have to offer nine twenty. Oh, there's another buyer, maybe nine twenty. They already have the home. Uh, so, uh, I actually don't know what the purpose of having this fake real estate agent is, but it's, you know, it's fun. Well, so that's, that's the only problem is that it would have been really nice is if, if they actually do have that drama and then they find the extra $400,000 to get the first home in the first place. Yeah. 
That would that would make for an amazing show. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have just a house? Or, you know, it, instead of like the uh, people who like try to flip houses, can it be something along the lines of like a, like a storage wars situation, where people just kind of like walk up to the house, like, "All right, so what are you willing to put on it?" <laughs> right, exactly. That's oh, we got four hundred. We got four hundred. Oh, five hundred. Five hundred. We got five fifty. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a mailbag. <laughs> we have a mailbag for the Property Brothers uh, episode. Ted Glover asks, are we sure Jonathan and Drew Scott are two people, or could it be trick photography, much like Lindsay Lohan in The Parent Trap or Haley Mills if we want to go the old school original movie? Uh, shout out to Calling Out the Original Movie, which is actually really good. Um, they're definitely not two people because the contractor, which I think that's that one's Drew? Drew is the contractor. Yeah. The contractor. Oh no no no! Sorry way, sorry sorry. Jonathan, Jonathan is the licensed contractor. Drew is the okay. real estate agent. Okay, Jonathan is way prettier, and I think <laughs> I think that disproves the the trick photography thing. <laughs> okay, I'm willing to uh, I'm willing to bite on that. Uh, Kyle Slaby asks with HGTV's sudden retirement or f- of flip or flop after nasty off the field issues, the network, I'll believe you. the, the network option to replace the star show by splitting time with role players like flip or flop Vegas and hometown in your, <laughs> in your opinion, is it better to bank on, tr- on a troubled, but popular show or a stable, uh, a stable to average to below, uh, average knockoffs. Uh, yeah, I would go with the troubled but popular show. I think I get. I don't know what the nature of the off-field issues are. Like maybe they're quite bad. In which case, yeah. But I think you know, pro- probably go with the star show, which evidently is flip or flop. Yeah, it's it's hard because I believe, and I'm actually just checking this out now, that uh, this became an issue when they split. Yeah, they split because they had challenges in their marriage and they filed for divorce in uh, January 2017. So that was like their big issue. It's tough. Yeah, it's it's hard to it's it's hard to work. It, it'd that be sort difficult of to keep the show going. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it, not everybody's you know Tammy Wynette, and if, not everybody's Tammy Wynette and George Jones. Like you can't just put that past each other, regardless of the fact right. that you tried to kill each other once. <laughs> what would have been great is if if the show had just turned into them dating by flipping houses. Like they take a potential date to flip a house with them and that's how the date go. They're just flipping a house. Yeah. That would have been an amazing show. Obviously it's a terrible idea for date because flipping houses takes like weeks, whatever. I don't care. <laughs> what a fantastic way to get to know. Somebody. No, no, no. I feel like you keep the show, you keep flipper flipper flop, but you uh, also air their arguments. Oh my god! I yes. would watch that. I would. I would DVR that. The I would, hell out of that. I would yeah. pay the sling people to give me DVR option on that because right. that's would, like appointment viewing. Yeah, I would. I would have to watch that. That would immediately take precedence over everything. Like, oh, they're they're having their marriage, or they're they're, they're you know their marriage is falling apart again. They're not getting along again. I just oh, so you think that that's what they should do? Oh yes. Let's do this. This is this is so thick and perfect. this is so thick and rich. I want to drizzle on drizzle on pancakes. Like this is gonna be perfect. Uh, uh, Don from Ohio asks: Is it possible that the Property Brothers are not actually twins, uh, but one of them is a clone of the other? Uh, it is possible, and I would say the real estate agent is the clone. I could see that. Yeah, he, he well he he doesn't have much of a job here. Right. <laughs> so, especially because the home's already bought. Yeah. <laughs> so no, I, I could I could totally believe that. Also, which property brother is more likely to be a serial killer? Real I, estate agent. No, no, I totally what? think it's the, I think it's the contractor. He has the uh, opportunity to like bury bodies in in these uh, in these homes that he's putting together. Just because it's easier for him to be a serial killer doesn't mean it's more likely that he's the one that is. Besides, man. How much do they love each other, right? Maybe he can just ask his brother to hide the body for him, mm. right? This, you know, I, I think it's less about which one uh, is the is the serial killer and which one, like, uh, is just that they work as a team in this sort of situation, right. both so on the like, show uh, and like on like on Dexter, for example, 
when uh spoilers for like season two i guess <laughs> when, <laughs> when, spoilers of like 12 <laughs> years like 10 years ago yeah yeah right when dexter's dad finds out that his kid is a turning into a serial killer he like decides well the best way to handle this is to channel it in a productive direction i'll teach you how to not get caught and i'll teach you to only kill bad guys there like, you go. it could be like that it's like the, their familial tie is so strong they like cover for each other yeah I, I could see that eric thompson asks which property brother is carson wentz and which is jared goff well okay so the contractor is obviously carson wentz he's a salt of the earth kind of guy <laughs> Real, I mean, he literally wears a hard hat. I like, I come on, uh, Jared Goff, East Coast or West Coast. Sorry, Jared Goff, West Coast, probably more likely to wear a suit. Uh, doesn't know, uh, which direction the sun rises in. There we go. <laughs> uh, definitely the real estate agent. It's not, it's not even close. The guy wearing the literal hard hat is also the quarterback from North Dakota. It's come on, yeah. That's well. He's North Dakota tough, as John nice Gruden would say. Yeah, that's that is awful. Uh, so that is going to be it for our April Fools' uh, episode of the show. We've never I don't know done how many one. People stayed to the end. I, that's, I, hey, that's, if you've that's if you've made it me. to the end, we applaud you because that was that was not easy for us, and that's certainly not easy for you. So <laughs> <laughs> we. We appreciate it. Um, again, we've never done one of these before, so we figured, hey, what the hell? We'll uh, we'll give it a shot. And so we we mentioned a few weeks ago that we're going to create a new podcast where we just do live readings of of Property Brothers episodes. So we figured we'd try one. Um, so that's going to be it for this episode. Uh, Arif, what do you have to plug that's not Property Brothers related? <laughs> we're going to put a. Um a uh, huge draft. Um, I'm not going to call it a draft guy because we're not going to have scouting reports on like 400 players or anything like that. But sort of um, uh, a draft landing page its own coverage. I'm putting together a bunch of analytics on uh, the top five players in each position, the top 40 players in the draft. Luke's putting together a bunch of videos. Uh, Sam's writing up player bios and stuff like that. We've got like a draft hub over uh, its own coverage that we're putting together. Um, it's not going to be launched, uh, you know, for uh, a week, but. Uh, the stuff that we're putting together, we're really excited about. So you should uh, check that out when it goes live. Sweet. So that's going to be it. Again, if you've enjoyed the show, um, I want to say non-ironically, but I, I feel like that's kind of pushing it. Uh, if you would like to support the show, you can do so at paypal.me slash Norse code, or you can go to uh, patreon.com slash Norse code to become a recurring uh, uh, donor there. Again, we, we appreciate everything you guys have done for us. So, again, thank you so much for listening and for Arif, for myself, for Jonathan and Drew Scott. Continue to demand excellence and demand Norse code. Norse Code is the largest and only division of Norse Code LLC. You can find Norse Code on the Daily Norseman, SB Nation's Vikings blog at dailynorseman.com. You can also find it on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music Podcasts, or wherever else fine podcasts are aggregated. Our Vikings blogger extraordinaire and generally useful human is Arif Hassan, who can be found on Twitter at Arif Hassan NFL. Our intrepid producer and occasional co-host James Bogachnik can be found on Twitter at Big Mono or curating the official Norse Code Twitter feed at Norse Code DN. I'm your host with a firm grasp of the obvious, Dusty O'Connell, and my name is my handle on Twitter. If you'd like to donate a few bucks to the show, your one-time donation can be made at paypal.me slash Norse Code, or a recurring monthly contribution can be made by visiting patreon.com slash Norse Code. Please visit our website, norsecodepodcast.com, where you'll find links to our Facebook and YouTube pages, along with the episode archive and some other good stuff. And any questions or comments that won't fit in a tweet can be emailed to norsecodepodcast at gmail.com. And on behalf of the entire Norse Code staff, thank you so much for listening. Our formula is this. We go out, we hit people in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs>